The iPod Max are an interesting beast. The majority of YouTube and general consumers are focusing on two things. The price and the headphone bra. But I'm here to answer your questions with where these fall within our world. Are the iPod Max any good for music production and mixing? Here's what I've discovered in the last 24 hours. Hello, my name is George Lever, and if you're new here, I'm a music producer here in the UK. And typically, I hate headphones, so. Why am I a good person to talk to you about them? My theory is, if I like anything about them, it's doing something right. Otherwise, they're back in the box and being returned. So, before we get any further, I'm going to answer the main question that's cropped up on my Instagram. Do they even sound good? Yes, they do. Right, thank you for coming. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, thumbs up, brilliant. Oh, don't be a dick. Okay, we can go into more detail than that, but I figured there's probably more than a few of you that are here just to find out that simple answer before we go into more detail and get completely Gerald undone about the headphones. So let's talk about the meat and two veg about the matter. How do they compare about the things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis? Namely my HD6 XXX's and my AirPod Pros. Are they actually useful for me? The AirPod Max sound great. And for now, that's enough. They have a very pleasant EQ curve, which feels pretty close to the ideal Harman curve, with a low end lift that starts in the low base area and it extends pretty far below. My only dislike about these, which I think will go away over time, is that when I first listened to them, there was this pretty brittle top end on them above like the 10, 12K area. I had a pretty similar experience with my AirPod Pros, but that went away after a while. I don't know how long it took, but I did have to play in the headphones. I guess the only argument would be is for £550, should I really have to burn in the drivers? My gut instinct is no. This is the most important part of both these headphones, but mainly the Maxes. And it's something that people are missing when they're doing their reviews, and that's the adaptive EQ. This is where I'm going to be making my main investment with time and effort to get used to them and hopefully should yield results that I may not be able to get via other means. Adaptive EQ, the AirPod Maxes and also the Pros have DSP inside the headphones. These connect to microphones inside the cups. Why? Um, well, the headphones are now able to listen to how they're sealed around your ear and what your ear does to the sound within the chamber. That adaptive EQ then changes how the music is presented to you to ensure uh, the translation is perfect. These micro adjustments in the scanning happens 200 times a second. So if done correctly, in theory, irrespective of how your ear is messing with the internal acoustics or the seal of wearing from wearing glasses, the headphones should be fully capable of adjusting for this, ensuring you hear what should be heard as it should be heard. In the software world, the closest thing that we have to this for engineers is Sonarworks. And the software version of that for headphones is 85 pounds. But that ties you to a computer and you can't take it anywhere you go. So I think this might be the killing blow for the Apple stuff. You have a headphone that's adapting to you and your surroundings and the way that it's being worn all the time and you don't need to stay at your computer. I, I love that. So. How do they compare? I've had a lot of headphones and typically I don't tend to get along with them. So for me, any that manage to stick around typically mean they have a use that I can't achieve via other means, whether that's with speakers or any other re uh, reference source. These AirPod Pros are my dailies. They are incredibly convenient. They sound great, they're small, they're pocketable, but they did have this awful top end when they arrived. To the point, where it was so bad that I've considered sending them back. After a while, the shrill top end went away, smoothed off, and now I don't really want to live without them, to a point where if I lost them or they broke, I, would, I wouldn't think twice about buying them again. I also own uh, the Sennheiser HD 6 XXX's. They're, they're the mass drop edition of the HD 650's. These are well-known referencing headphones for mixing and editing. I use them for editing mainly and for final level checking. I don't particularly love using them, but I just know that they're reliable. But the main point with the HD 650s, I'll call them, I do not like mixing on them. It, they are not for me for that. I also briefly tested out the Openback Shure SRH840s, what a name, those got sent back within three days. 
Um, I'm sure they're fine for editing work, but those are £400 headphones and they didn't do anything that I didn't already have access to with these and the Sennheisers. I also own the Sonys, which are the closest competitor to these, but they now belong to my dad. Um, I can't remember what they sound like, but I do remember the noise cancelling making me feel like I had trapped water in my ear if I moved my head too much, and that was enough to make me want to not use them anymore. That sensation, the lopsided trapped water thing, doesn't exist in their AirPod Pros, and it also doesn't exist in the Maxes, which I just took for a walk. I went for a walk with the headphones, and nothing, no, no problem. They weren't too heavy because my neck is perfectly fine and the headphones don't really feel like they're there anyway. But that's not the point really. We're not going over things that other people have gone into. We're talking about me and you. We're talking about the audio production and, and mixing and sound. So here's my theory. And this is what I'm going to come back to after a couple of weeks. I'm predicting that after a few weeks of use, the AirPod Max are gonna level out and I'll find mixing and referencing on them faster than with any other headphones that I've got, simply down to the adaptive EQ alone. I'm prepared to be wrong, but I really hope that I'm not because anything that gives me a competitive edge on my surroundings or competitors is worth the investment alone. If it doesn't work, they're going back. So don't worry, I'm not here to spend money willy-nilly. Um, that's not my thing. Conclusion, I guess, yeah? All that is left now is to burn in the drivers, put them to use and see where we end up. <laughs> Place your bets down below as to whether you think I'll end up returning them or whether they will adjust and be the best things in the world based upon what I've shared with you in this video today. I'm also curious, what are your favorite headphones? Should I be trying them? And is looking at technology like this from our point of view, from a music production point of view, important to you? Should we be doing more of this? Let me know down below. On first impressions, the AirPod Max are impressive. I'm hoping the adaptive EQ could be the ace in the hole that almost every other YouTuber is ignoring and missing. I'll be back with a follow-up of my discovery soon, but until then, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below if you choose to, and give this video a thumbs up. It, it really does help with the algorithm pushing the video towards more people that will find it useful. If you think I should be doing more tech reviews, specifically looking at music production and mixing, let me know and also maybe suggest what you think it is that we should be taking a look at. Until next time, don't be a dick and don't buy headphones that your wife doesn't know about and then do a video about it while she's in the house. Whoops. Cheers everyone. Bye.